Brian Cox reveals why the earth is round this morning, which is a terrible British breakfast TV programme. Highly recommend you don't watch it. You'll end up front kicking your TV into oblivion. Trust me, don't watch it. Unless you want to destroy that TV, which isn't a bad idea, to be honest. But let's, let's have a look what Brian's got, what he's bringing to the table. Is he going to shut the flat earth down with some real science? Obviously, they're bringing out all the top guns. We saw the Globe Perth conference the other day when they brought in the big guns. Now we're getting the big guns up here on TV. Should we be worried? Let's have a look. Forces of nature. Yeah. So, so in what areas? What are you looking at? Well, the, the idea is that if you look at the, the world that we see, so so you know, the green leaves, the blue sky, spherical planets. Hang on, Brian. I've got to stop you there pretty much immediately. I do lots of observations, my dear man. I've never seen spherical planets. I've got a powerful camera and a half-decent telescope, but I've never seen spherical planets. I see lights in the sky that do not match the images produced by the mainstream science and NASA, space agencies like NASA. It don't match. So we've got a problem there, Brian. You're pushing something that doesn't match observable reality already. I'm going to call you out on that, Brian. All right. You're making a bullshit assumption based purely on your heliocentric fetish for balls flying through vacuums. Sorry, Brian, that's not good enough. You're supposed to be proving the Earth is round here through science. You are a professor, after all, are you not? Or are you just a moronic failed keyboard player who's got a touch of the mannequin about him, who's just parroting utter fucking nonsense for a half-decent wage? I don't know, let's have a look. We'll, we'll work out what you are. All those things are telling you something about the deeper structure that underlies nature so even life so next week's is about the origin of life so it's, it's how did that should be interesting shouldn't it i wonder if that'll be based on a story and layered of stories layers of story upon story upon story i'm wondering if there'll be some presentations in cgi brian mm, let me think we you know we feel living is a, is a very special thing but it's a property of matter of this stuff, the, 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 the Earth was once just a dead world when it formed, you know, four and a half billion years ago. And at some point, that matter came along. Can you prove anything you've just, just said there? No, of course you can. You're saying it in such a matter-of-fact manner. You've got absolutely no evidence to back that claim. Brian, you're a moron, mate. And you go to some really fl far-flung destinations, and as you can see there from that tiny bit that we showed, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, it's beautifully shot, and you see some incredible things that you wouldn't necessarily have to get, get to see. Yeah, I think that, that was the idea, to send film crews out, and it's sort of the way, you mentioned David Attenborough earlier, the way that his pro... I thought you were proving the ridiculous re pantomime theory that we live on a cannonball flying through a vacuum. All you've done so far is tickle your own undercarriage. Get on with it, Brian. As work where a film crew can go and for, for months even film something spectacular. And we saw that wave on that clip through the Amazon. Yeah. It's in a wonderful, incredible tidal wave that goes up the river. And you see in, in the film that someone spends their life surfing it. So this kind of, his whole thing is to wait for this wave and surf into the... What the fuck's this got to do with living on a cannibal flying through a vacuum, Brian? Jungle of the Amazon. How often does it come along? It's, uh, it's, it comes when, when the moon and the sun are alive. So I think it's about once every couple of months or something right. like that. The, the, the Pora Rocca, it's called. Well, you're, you're not... Because they go out and they sit for months waiting for something to happen. Clown. Uh, the right thing to happen. You're, you're not there all the time. You're in... I saw Philip a few months back on the street. What a sketchy character he is. I won't say where it was, but he was dead sketchy. I mean, he does believe he's living on a ball flying through a vacuum, so I suppose you would be sketchy. 
it's one less, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was the idea, to film these beautiful things. You can't, if I'm there, it's kind of, you can't spend all that time. We had different crews out at di the same time filming things. And then the idea was to try and stitch it together. Essentially, you, you ask the question, what is it, what's the biggest, the tallest mountain you could make on a planet like the Earth? What, what sets that? So you've got the Earth's gravity, which depends on... on so we got the Earth's gravitational theory, okay, so we're getting into the realms of storytelling here, even though we're supposed to be proving the Earth is round, okay. It's mass, really, how much yeah. stuff is in the Earth, and it's pulling it down, pulling it down. So you can imagine there's a force. So we have to imagine there's a force, okay, this is getting really scientific now. It's on the ground. And, and the bigger you build the thing, the more the force is. The and bigger you... that we build the thing, the more imaginary force we need to apply. Is that right, Brian? OK, I got it, I got it. You can work out, well, how, what, what is it when that force overwhelms the strength of the rock and it starts to sink? Your it's actually on Earth, the, the mountain Mauna Kea, which is one of the Hawaiian volcanoes. It's actually taller than Everest, if you measure from the surface of the seafloor. And that's sinking. So that's as tall the as it can get. Thinking. Yeah, so, so it's too so heavy. that is as tall so, as they go, yeah. they could go here. So if you've got a big enough planet with enough gravity, essentially, then, then anything that gets too big will sink. And, and So this moron is claiming the mountain, or volcano, or whatever it is in Hawaii, is being sucked to the centre of an imaginary ball. <laughs> Where's your evidence, Brian? I thought we were proving a globe. Gravity just works in it. It doesn't care which angle so you're at. So it pushes it back. It's into a circle, into a sphere, if it's big enough. And then you look out into the solar system, the little moons, about less than about 150 miles across or something like that, have not got enough gravity, so they're all misshapen. It's called the potato radius. Look at the state of him. Now, in the 70s, there was a game, a kid's toy, called Mr. Potato. There's a touch of the Mr. Potato about our Mr. Brian Cox here. There's also a slight twist of mannequin. I'd probably better leave it there. I don't want to get too brutal on our friend here. So you get That's potato shape. I can say that one. <laughs> with the potato radius. So I, so with the... I, I should add, I originally thought this guy was a lying deceiver. He, he's not. He's just a deluded moron who believes his own hype. The perfect person to control. Stupid and egotistical. Perfect. That's why he's here. But it's so obvious what these clowns are about. It would seem now we're about to get to the scientific stuff for the globe. Thank goodness for that, because all we've had so far is waffle. Oh, oh yeah. So, well, well, the way that I demonstrated it, you just wanted to get messy, yeah, yeah, don't you? So the way that we demonstrated it in the, in the programme is to say, so what am I doing? If I want to make that into a ball then I have to apply enough force to overcome the... If I don't apply enough force... Right, so... I'm struggling to see where a moronic half-wit ex-keyboard player fits into the heliocentric model. Are you claiming the globe's wet sand and that you're God? Where is it... What does, how does this demonstration back anything other than your stupidity, Brian? So then it'll stay like some sort of mistake you know, potato shape. So that's what gravity is doing, really. It's acting as a, as a force that's... So a theory is doing that. OK, OK, this is real scientific. Squashing it down, and, and, and it'll turn it into a sphere because it acts the same in every direction. Hello, YouTube. For more... Oh, hang on, that, that was it. So, just to recap... We've had Brian Waffle on for two or three minutes about a guy surfing up a river, telling a few stories, a mountain being sucked to the bottom of the oceans because of gravity, to the centre of the glo supposed globe earth. We've been told we've got to um, use our imagination to imagine things being sucked and pulled to a ball. And then we got to see Brian squash some wet sand in his hand. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the globe proof that's supposed to debunk observable reality. All known practical demonstrations. That there. Brian, you're a fucking moron, mate.